as uh, you all know, uh, modern philosophers tend to despair over the problem of consciousness. Most famous uh, current philosopher of our mind is arguably David Chalmers, and uh, most of his fame stems from branding the concept of the hard problem of consciousness. And it's so hard that a lot of con uh, philosophers believe that it cannot be explained. There are a number of divergent positions. For instance, dualism, the idea that mind and matter are uh, entirely separate substances that uh, need to interact somehow, which is somewhat problematic because uh, matter is defined in, in physicalist by the sense that it's basically the causally close processes of physics. So it's not entirely clear how the mind would interact with it. There is a variant of this, which is epiphenomalism, which says that there is basically only a one-way relationship, that your consciousness is observing the physical universe, but there is no feedback that would disturb the causal closure of physics. The problem with epiphenomalism is, of course, that the epiphenomalists, uh, when they voice their opinion about being an epiphenomalist, have to move their mouth to do that. And these movements of their mouth are physical movements, and they are not correlated to whether the epiphenomalist is actually conscious or not. So the consciousness does not cause the epiphenomalists to make claims about their consciousness, which means you don't have to listen to them, which is unfortunate. Idealism uh, maintains that basically everything is mind. Panpsychism says that uh, mind is matter or an intrinsic aspect thereof. Uh, materialism says that everything is matter and uh, the mind has to emerge somehow over it. Identity theory says that mental processes are the same thing as brain processes. Exactly uh, integrated information theory says consciousness uh, basically results from how computation is arranged in space. And I, I feel that this Theory is so poorly formulated, it's sort of a control group because it violates either the church during thesis or becomes epiphenomenalist. So it's a way to test whether philosophers understand theories of representation. Illusionism is the idea that there is no consciousness. Uh, you just need to explain why some people pretend uh, that they claim to have it. And uh, mysterianism is uh, the position that something cannot be understood if Noam Chomsky doesn't understand it. So uh, Noam Chomsky is, of course, a mysterianist. Colin McGinn has Uh, coined the term of mysterianism. That means there is basically no explanation that could be found, or if uh, it could be found, it could be understood by a mere human brain. And so all these divergent positions, what they have in common is that the theory makes the explanation of consciousness structurally impossible, or outright denies that such an explanation could exist or would be intelligible. And uh, this is, of course, not the only game that is being played. On the other hand, there are many complementary and convergent positions. Uh, functionalism says that consciousness is a behavior. It's something that uh, a mind is doing in a particular way. Representationalism says that it's a kind of representation. The like attention schema theory says that consciousness is a model of attention, a similar way as our body schema is a model of what our body is doing. And uh, the global workspace theory that consciousness is very loosely paraphrased is a localized projection of the working memory contents into something that you can make a protocol from. The adaptive resonance theory says that uh, consciousness is basically um, a resonance effect in neural information processing substrate. I sometimes use the term virtualism, that uh, consciousness is a simulation of what it would be like if consciousness existed. And this also is very similar to um, perspectives that you will find in Buddhism and in other cultures. And so all these positions are not necessarily alternatives to each other. They are aspects of something that I think are more or less coherent perspectives on consciousness. And the hard problem is um, maybe a very specific thing in our own culture. And I wonder when this started. At some point I thought it started after we got rid of Christianity with the Enlightenment, or maybe a little bit earlier when the Christians were taking Aristotelian philosophy and turned it into part of their dogma and then uh, disabled our ability to properly think about mental processes because it conflicted uh, with the way in which the uh, cult was implemented. And uh, now I think that after reading and rereading Brentano and Goethe and so on, that maybe it's specifically a problem of the 20th century. Because in the 20th century is when we stopped thinking about metaphysics, when philosophers like Popper and the positivists said uh, metaphysics is pointless because it does not directly correspond to observables and so on. And we basically lost the way to distinguish the different entities that make up our ontology. because you cannot not have metaphysics. When you stop thinking about it, you still have an implicit metaphysics. And when you don't teach metaphysics to philosophers and scientists, they might be confused about the foundations of the structure of reality that they use to explain the world.